Another one borrowed from my good buddy Ryuichi Hasegawa. Although it may not seem like it, I do buy my own books on occasion. A Space Wolf story that could have featured any chapter of the Astartes and not made a blind bit of difference. It's not terrible, but the Space Wolves didn't really feel like Space Wolves to me, and the story itself was largely pointless. A sequel to Renegades from Heroes of the Space Marines. There was a great deal of potential for these characters to actually do something a little bit different and very interesting. But instead, all we get is the Renegades probably starting out to chaos. The story is okay, but uh, if I'm honest, it's removed any interest I had in the fate of these characters. This shows a wonderful facet to space marine warfare, specifically the precise clockwork enactment of a fairly complex battle plan. It is excellently written, brilliantly set up, and in all honesty, especially after the turd that was the chapters do, it made space marines interesting again. This is the best this anthology has to offer. Sanders creates a wonderful, occasionally tense atmosphere, and it is full of characters that we can sympathise with without the need for excessive exposition. It all culminates with a fantastic ending, and honestly, it's a near-perfect short story. It's... it's okay. I believe this was originally an audio story of some sort, which goes some way to explaining its slightly odd structure. But it does one thing that really gets on my pecs. At one point, the squad of space marines we're following splits up. Three guys we have never met before, let's call them Red Shirts 1, 2 and 3, go one way. And the two main characters, let's call them Kirk and Spock, go the other. Who isn't coming back alive? A simpler tale when compared to others in this anthology, but it's all the better for it. In some ways, it's a true, unstoppable force meets the immovable object situation, as the Imperial Fists, who are defense experts, defend against an oncoming horde of Necrons. There is some good action, and it has an ending that perfectly avoids the cheap, get-out-of-jail-free resolution. Although the Death Watch short from a previous anthology did have its flaws, I largely let them slide because the story itself was fun and a little bit different. Alas, not so here. There are a few inconsistencies dotted throughout, details about character relationships are delivered ham-fistedly and pointlessly, and the ending was predictable. Not to mention the action was more than a little bit shit. Quick factoid, the Silver Skulls are a chapter that were developed by 40k fans on the old Black Library forums, uh, most of whom migrated to the Black Library bolt hole. As for the story, it's not that bad. I mean, the idea is pretty interesting and the ending is decent, but Corkwell tries to fit in too many details about the Silver Skull culture, which ultimately ends up ruining the pace. This is an interesting one. On the one hand, it was fascinating to see how Grey Knight Battle Gear is prepared, which provides the sacrifice of the title. On the other hand, the Grey Knights themselves are only slightly more interesting than Uriel's codpiece. It's not bad, but if I'm honest, it was largely forgettable. This one definitely has a worse meh to good ratio than the previous Space Marine anthologies. The only stories equal in quality to And They Shall Know No Fear and Honor Amongst Thieves from Heroes of the Space Marines are Long Games at Caracas, which is easily the best here, and Black Dawn. This is truly a shame and I hope this is more of a blip than a sign that the Black Library just aren't bothering anymore. <laughs>